uh, developing 21st century sales skills to sell more 3PL services. My name is Joe Lynch, and I'll be presenting with my friend and colleague, Ann Holm, and a little bit about uh, the agenda. Ann and I will introduce ourselves. We'll talk about the biggest problems with selling 3PL services as we see it, and we work with a lot of 3PL people. Why, why it matters, why these problems matter more now than ever before. There are some big opportunities out there. And then we'll talk about developing the 21st century sales skills. And in part of that, we'll tell a little bit about the story of how Ann and I came to work together, um, which is how our training um, began. And then we have an offer for you. I'd like to say an exclusive limited time offer and all that, because I think that's important for uh, us to say. <laughs> um, and then last but not least, we'll have some questions at the end. Uh, feel free to um, use this chat feature. Some of you are already doing it. If you have a question, we'll try and uh, uh, answer it as we go. If we unmute everybody, there's always uh, too much background noise, so we typically don't unmute everybody. So continuing on, we'll talk about introducing ourselves. So I'll talk about my favorite topic, me. Um, my name is Joe Lynch. I'm the founder of Logistics of Logistics. Prior to the founding of Logistics of Logistics, which helps people in uh, 3PLs sell more services, we also do quite a bit of training. That's where Ann and I do training, kind of assessment and coaching. That's why we work together, because Ann's the coach. Um, prior to founding the Logistics of Logistics, I ran a 3PL. So I've been in the same boat that most of you are in, is selling 3PL services. Um, I had some great success in it, but also it felt like a lot of failure in it. So I, I know the feeling of uh, not having everything you want. I started my career in automotive and then I worked as a supply chain consultant. So I have kind of a deep background. Automotive's the biggest, baddest supply chain on earth. And I, I, I grew up in that. So that's me. Let's talk about Anne. Hi, everybody, and I'm happy to be here. I'm echoing, um, but if I'm the only one who hears it, I, I can I can work through it. Uh, so I'm I a, can't I'm hear a, it. A, oh, okay. So I, I'm, a, I'm a, a professional certified coach. So uh, that means that I've gone through the uh, training and um, certification to uh, be a, a coach. And I, I, have, I uh, focus on career, uh, executive coaching, and also sales coaching. Um, and that includes things like personal branding. So uh, putting your best foot forward and leveraging it. Um, I am a Myers-Briggs uh, master practitioner. And uh, I use a, for, for a large groups, I use this uh, instrument called the Type Coach, which is an online assessment. It's interactive, so it teaches as well as assesses. Um, and there's a particular uh, uh, version of it that's uh, for sales individuals. So I have something very special that I use for individuals who are wanting to become more effective in sales. Uh, prior to that, I actually worked in uh, brain injury. So I uh, came from an industry where uh, I was constantly seeking to help people uncover their potential and leverage it. So uh, I use a lot of those uh, experiences of, you know, let's see what we have here and let's leverage what you have here. Uh, those types of philosophies that help individuals be at their best. And I have to say, I'm a Michigan grad and go blue. <laughs> I know, I know at least Jeff Tembrook doesn't agree. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, con continuing on. Ah, we have a poll question for you to get started. So let's. Before we get started, we want to make sure we understand what everyone's hoping to un to learn from uh, today's session. So if you don't mind, answer these questions for us. Or actually just pick the one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pick, on, a, pick a vote on one. There's only one question. Uh, lead generation takes an early lead. Ah, sales skills. Good. Good. So it seems like there's it's kind of an e agreement here that um, lead generation is a concern. So is sales, sales skills and social selling. 
you've come to the right place. And obviously we're also gonna talk quite a bit about personal branding too, but I think we're gonna touch, touch on all of these. What Ann and I are always trying to understand is what people are here for, so we can kind of modify our our track. So it sounds like it's fairly even though. Um, we'll touch on all yep. these topics. I just I'm writing down. The, I, mean, I was just writing down the percentages just so we can make sure we circle back and, and know that information. Good deal. Good deal. And I got it. So let's talk. So let's talk about the biggest problems in three PL sales. And um, while we talk about that, I'm also going to incorporate my story and as and then eventually involve Ann because that's where our story began. Um, I used to run a 3PL, mostly LTL services. Um, and while I was the general manager of the business, we tripled in sales. So we had some over my five years. So we had some success. But what I also felt was a lot of failure. We had a lot of sales guys who never were able to get the success they wanted. And I think I bumped into a lot of the same problems that all of you did um, or are encountering. So you're working with busy, distracted, indifferent customers. And I think that's the whole world now. Uh, they ignore anything sales are boring. They're playing around with their phone. They have a million pieces of uh, information hit them every day. So they don't read everything. We, we skim across the top of things we go for clickbait. <laughs> so very short attention span, hard to get a hold of these guys. And again, even when you are talking to someone, they could be fiddling with their phone and thinking about their next meeting. Um, in addition, um, we're, a lot of people out there, including myself at one time, were using outdated sales processes. We were trying to cold call people. People were online looking for options and I was calling them. And I was telling my guys, it's a numbers game. Get out there and make some calls. And we work with a lot of 3PLs, Ann and I, in our, in our coaching assessment training program. And a lot of them will start off saying things like, well, we're the low, we'll get you a lower price. We'll save you money and um, great customer service. We have integrity. It's very much me too messaging. Doesn't go anywhere. Sales process isn't aligned to the buying process. The buying process begins online for almost every major purchase anymore. 93% of B2B sales are beginning with a Google, Bing, Yahoo search. And part of all this is you can't cut through the clutter. Man, I'm going to let you speak to this next one because you, you know it even better than me. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of the images I think of when I think of uh, uh, online marketplace is of uh, a, a Middle Eastern bazaar where there's just lots and lots going on, lots of stimulation, lots of information. And how do you rise above that so that you stand out? Um, one of the keys to that is to know what your special niche is and know how to leverage it. So a, a, a number of times uh, individuals uh, miss uh, the opportunity to stand out because they they haven't defined who they are. And so they don't have any leverage points other than price um, or some other commodity-based uh, mindset. So we look at leveraging strengths, finding your brand, and that's what helps you connect with good quality leads. Yep. And, and if I could c continue on here is, so when I was running this little 3PL and um, struggling to get my sales guys to be successful. Because as a general manager, it wasn't enough that I had some sales. Me and the owner made all the sales. So I came to Ann, and my big, <laughs> one of my big problems when I called Ann, again, Ann's an executive coach, I was saying, I'm not disciplined about making cold calls, and I can't expect my guys to make cold calls if I can't be disciplined enough to make them myself. And it wasn't just me, the owner of the company, we would have competition and once in a while we both tried to make cold calls. Neither one of us could get past 50 or 60 calls and not even having any success at it. And what's ironic is I went on LinkedIn and looked for an executive coach. So I was saying, oh, it works for executive coaches. They can be found online, but not people who sell logistics. And I think that's one of the things we run into all the time is people think, well, yeah, digital marketing, content marketing, that, all that fancy stuff, that's for uh, Amazon and for Google, but it's not for my little logistics business. 
Well, I got news for you. It is. <laughs> so um, continuing on, um, why this matters. So there's big, big opportunities, and I would say big risk out there right now. More companies are recognizing that they should probably outsource their 3PL, you know, the, their transportation, logistics, warehousing. They're, they're doing that right now. The business is rapidly changing. There's new competitors like um, Jeff Benzos and Convoy.com, uh, FreightQuote.com. We're seeing big Wall Street companies get involved in consolidating the industry. Um, we're seeing, oh, I think we have a question here. Hang on. What is your question here? Anyway, I don't see the question didn't pop up just yet. <laughs> um, anyway, um, the opportunity the opportunity is greater than ever, but it's also um, some big risk. I think you're going to see smaller firms are really going to be threatened by the consolidation that is going on in the industry. I think some we're going to find that some brokers and some 3PLs are going to be shut out from assets. And I think you're going to find that there's some of these online marketplaces like Convoy.com, FreightQuote.com, and others that are emerging are going to take a piece of the business that was transactional down at the bottom of the industry. So 3PL business is growing up. There are fewer companies and they're going to be bigger and more sophisticated. They're going to use the stuff we're talking about today. So that's why it's, it's, it's more important than ever. And I was continuing on with that same theme. The buying process is beginning online. Again, people like me, I was looking for an executive coach on LinkedIn. Um, people are going to Google and Bing and all these other places to online to find options. They're looking for solutions. They're looking for experts. So if you're an expert and you're not online, are you really an expert? <laughs> um, the buying process begins there. That's where you need to be. I should also add the, the oldest millennial is 36 years old. Um, as the father of two millennials, I can tell you they don't always answer the phone. Um, I had the millennials I had working for me, um, they, they would rather text, they would rather instant message. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but the whole idea that we're gonna try and make 100 phone calls a day to catch, catch those guys, ain't gonna work. So we need to start looking for other ways to connect. And do you wanna add anything before we go further? Yeah, just just that uh, the uh, the age of information has affected all uh, all markets in different ways, and it's a force that can't be ignored. So uh, it needs to be leveraged. Yep. So about six or seven years ago, I was running this three PL. I was struggling to get uh, more sales, and really was more concerned about my my guys because me as the general manager in charge of sales. I wanted to be able to say, guys, just follow the process. The process works, except I couldn't do that. When I looked at where all of our leads came for our 10 biggest customers, which is the majority of our business, they were came from places that we couldn't replicate. So when I first started talking to Ann, it was saying, hey, how can I make more cold calls? How can you help me be more disciplined and make cold calls? And Kind of when I began that process, because of the way Anne's approach to the world, she said, you know, I'm a, I'm a coach. We can't cold call anybody. We still make sales. So we kind of began this process where, first off, Anne did um, some assessment on me. And Anne, maybe you can take it over from here and talk about the first yep. step in our process. Yeah. So the first step in our process uh, was this idea of, Joe, do you really know what your strengths and your blind spots are? Um, just using the example of all these cold calls, uh, not only was the cold calling a, a disheartening experience for you, it was neither energizing or engaging. And so it kind of had a way of spilling over into how you approached everything. It was, it was, it was a, a, a negative experience. So um, I said, Joe, do you know your strengths and your blind spots? Do you really know the things that you enjoy doing and that you do naturally uh, and do very well? And um, 
you know, he had some sense of it, um, and yet he wasn't even really able to put a finger on um, all of the different things that he did well, um, and what the what was tripping him up. Uh, let alone uh, using it in a practical way. So we went first with uh, an assessment. And uh, when we did that, then we started talking about, well, now, how how is your personality working with the people that you work with? Uh, are you are you being able to leverage it? So what I used for for Joe is the uh, Myers Briggs uh, type indicator. There's lots of different personality assessments. I happen to really like this one uh, because uh, it allows you to uh, find out whether you're a possibilities person or you as somebody who thinks in the here and now. Whether you're a logical person or if you're um, a, you deal more with personality, or excuse me, with other individuals, people person. Uh, it turns out that Joe is a possibilities person. He's an ENFP, and he um, so he's very, very good with people, uh, and very, very good with new ideas. So and really good talking, looking, and really good looking. Yes. So we started <laughs> talking about well, how can you leverage that, and and we threw the cold calling model out the window. And I said, have you ever thought about blogging? Have you ever thought about uh, creating uh, some other sort of way to reach your customers other than cold calling? And that's uh, how logistics of logistics started. So um, what, I, what we're turning to here now is uh, the uh, particular assessment uh, that I use, which is actually called Type Coach. So it's not actually the MBTI, but it's same sort of concepts. So it's this idea of um, understanding ways that you can be more effective in sales. So I run individuals through this interactive program that allows you to uh, not only learn the concepts, but to sort of see where you fall. And then you come out with some things that are very specific to sales. So for instance, you know, Joe, this, we're using Joe as an example, uh, talking about things like learning how to answer questions directly rather than uh, riffing off on some other topic. That's a very common thing with this type. We don't know we do it and we do it because we love the idea of possibilities and ideas, but sometimes you just have to answer the question directly and specifically. So just going on down the line, we would look at what can you do right now? What are the quick wins? Uh, in terms of doing your job more effectively. Yep, and Anne, if I could add um, to to that is when when Anne first started the assessment of me, it was it was a very interesting approach. I mean, everybody likes hearing about their strengths, and but it's also interesting to hear about some of the um, ways to address your blind spots. <clears throat> And once you know some of these things are problems, you can start to logically address them. And when, you know, for instance, I know I talk too much in, in the sales process. So, it, you know, I'll have it written down, um, stop talking <laughs> or, you know, making sure I don't go too far. Um, writing mm -hmm. things down, all these were great start, great, great suggestions. And continuing on, this is just one of one piece of Anne's assessments that we do. Yes, you know one of the uh, this this made, this came to my mind when you talked about the talking too much. One of the great ways this is just a hot tip. If you're a type of person who talks too much during uh, uh, conference calls or you tend to interrupt, just put yourself on mute and then you unmute yourself when you uh, really really want to talk. It's an effective quick win strategy. Uh, once you know, that's sort of your your uh, your blind spot. So also in this uh, assessment, we looked at strengths, so stuff that you can really leverage. Uh, for instance, Joe is really good at exp inspiring others to look at things more in a long-term framework than in the here and now. Uh, that's why he's he does things like logistics of logistics, because he's trying to bring in the concepts and ideas of trends and future thinking into the work that he does. At the same time, one of his challenges is to remember key details from important client conversations. So, you know, his mind has a tendency of jumping forward to all the possibilities 
And at the same time, there are some specific things that clients need to know and want to know. So remembering those key de details or writing them down. So you can just see that with, for, with every strength is a, a potentially corresponding blind spot. And so you want to be able to leverage strengths and then have strategies to get around those blind spots. And uh, that's kind of uh, what I do in the coaching process along with the, the branding piece. What do you bring to the table? What do you want to leverage? What do you want to uh, share with your potential customers? Yep. And if uh, I could add this, Anne, is, is you know, when you begin this process, you, you guys might be looking at this and saying, what does this have to do with making more sales? Well, it has everything to do with making more sales. I was kind of barking up the wrong tree trying to force myself to make more phone calls. And what after I started working with Ann and she said, that's probably never going to work for you. You know, That's too routine Monday and you're not going to want to do this. But here's some other areas that you can use to, to take advantage. And I think the personal branding begins with this self-assessment. I know it does. To skip this, you might as well not do the training. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the other thing too, there's there is advantages you bring from a personal level on a team uh, level. Again, a strength with a corresponding blind spot. Um, and so, if you're uh, if you're working with uh, with other individuals, you're you're a team. It's also really helpful to know uh, who is likely to be best at certain things and who may need a little extra help. So, you know, uh, the, the team strengths, team challenges piece comes into, into play and is very handy when you're working with uh, into people that are not just individual proprietors of their service. Um, so, and this could be even collaborators. Uh, yeah, and, and also- these are just pieces. These are just pieces of Anne's pro, um, approach. I mean, there's a, this is a very big, um, report that she gives you back and then she coaches you through you know each section mm -hmm. that's right yep it comes at it from a lot of different angles it's pretty thorough so so continuing on um once once i went through this process you know again by myself not looking at this as a, a program you know and i would ultimately offer i was just trying to understand you know, how am I going to go forward? And after my assessment with Anne, she said, you know, we need to kind of do something different than this cold calling. And she started saying to me, put, put yourself out there and um, in a different way. And so this goes back five, six, seven years ago where I started, you know, the logistics of logistics, which started just as a blog, as a way to connect with people in a way that wasn't cold calling. And Again, that was started with the assessment of where my strengths lie. Um, I could never be a great cold caller because it wasn't a strength, and I don't think it's a good way to go anyway. But um, there's a lot of different, a lot of different personality types, and there's a lot of different ways to put yourself out there. But um, Anne does that assessment and helps you understand how to develop that personal brand. So, you know, hand it off to you again. Yeah. So one another thing I was going to, when you, you talk about the cold calling versus the blogging, uh, not only, uh, you know, Joe has the background in uh, working in logistics uh, in the automotive uh, industry. Um, and he also has a master's in training and, and education. So, you know, here was untapped potential. This idea of okay, you know a lot about this space. You're a personable guy. You like writing. You're able to connect uh, uh, individuals with concepts that matter. Uh, these are real strengths for Joe. And, I, and so that's when I started to, to suggest to him, well, have you thought about blogging as a way to uh, to leverage some of that training and get out there a little bit? So. Uh, He's, you know, that, that sounded pretty good to him. So he started with, with the Logistics of Logistics blog, uh, which expanded into other uh, services offered because he was able to um, use both his personality, his background, and his uh, training, his educational training, and to piece all that together into his own personal brand. I don't think that there is there is only one Joe Lynch and there is only one logistics of logistics. And it's been a carefully crafted, a carefully crafted uh, 
a message over time. Julius agrees. <laughs> Julius agrees. Honestly, I gave the dog a grainy. I said, you can sit in here. It's unbelievable. Sorry about that, guys. Well, I, so, anyway, continuing on that, beginning with, you know, our first step, you know, working my working with Anne was the assessment, understanding my strengths, understanding my blind spots, and then kind of next beginning to brand myself with those. And again, we, we were walking through lots of people in the transportation logistics space doing just the same thing. And you don't have to follow exactly what I am because you're not exactly who I am. Um, so what, what our goal is always to have, you know, to play to your strengths. And very yep. closely related to those strengths is the idea of developing a niche. So the logistics of logistics, the goal was always to help transportation logistics companies sell more. So we do it through training. We do it through digital marketing. I only work with transportation and logistics companies because that's my niche. If I said that I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to create a digital marketing company, I wanted to work with anybody who'll work with me, that's not a niche. In the transportation, logistics, warehousing space, what we're seeing now is just a glut of businesses. I mean, there is a lot of competition. And I think it's now expected really important to start developing a niche for all of our digital marketing clients we're pushing them to say what's your specialization and we've got some examples here i won't read them all off but the idea that you can be everything to everybody is an old idea uh, with the internet to be found you have to specialize and that's what we're trying to help people do so that specialization is very closely tied to your personal brand so it, what, what you're seeing here is a progression assessment, that coaching, understanding who you are, understanding how your personal brand um, should move forward. And then also, you know, in, involving your, your niche. And you have anything to add to this? No, I think this is a, yeah, this is a nice list. Yep. So, um, you know, we're going to share a lot of ideas here over the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, one of the things we are big proponents of is understanding your ideal customer. So if you're going to work in, you know, be a specialist and let's just say work in retail logistics, you have to understand the ideal customer as well as, as well as you understand the back of your hand. It really has to be a deep understanding. You have to read what they read. You have to know the biggest problems going on in their industry. You have to understand how your solutions solve their problems. And it, it's so much more than, oh, we'll come pick up your stuff. Um, you can't sell on the internet using we're the lowest price. There's only one company out there who is the lowest price LTLs provider. You have to start down the path of a specialization. Um, this, is what, this is what's required almost in every industry now. So we always say, let's create a customer avatar, which is... Um, you know, not a real person. It's a composite of a whole bunch of characteristics. But what we really are trying to understand is what's their buying behavior? What's the buying triggers? Why are they going to buy from the, why are they going to switch three PLs? Why will they listen to you? What's the last thing that went wrong that made them call you back? And those are the kind of things we're trying to understand. And it's not a superficial understanding. So in our program that we take our customers through, um, and we also do this for our digital marketing clients. We really push them on who is your customer and let's try and start that march of a thousand miles in their shoes. Um, my friend and mentor, Eric Wagner, created this walk a thousand miles in your customer's shoes because he said, people always say you have to walk a mile in their shoes. And he said, nope, it's a thousand miles. So continuing on, and do you have any questions? Yes. Well, I was, I was going to comment. It's very, very helpful to be uh, uh, deliberate about this particular part of the uh, uh, business development um, because there's so many distractions out there and so many, you know, next shiny pennies and and um, things that look like opportunities. So being very deliberate and really examining uh, this question uh, has a lot of value. Uh, you know, long term, and you can revisit this uh, as many times as you want. Yeah, and you probably should. <laughs> and you probably should, but it's very important to to go through the rigors of defining it um, because there are so many, so many distractions out there and possibilities that can derail you from a, a course of action. 
Yep. So continuing on, what we do after we help you, you know, define who you want to sell to. And it, you know, when you have a specialization, it doesn't mean you can't do work with other people, but kind of declare a major and then you can still do the stuff on the, you know, for existing clients and even take on new clients. But mm -hmm. if you're going to say, we're going to start focusing on retail logistics, that doesn't mean you have to get rid of the, your, your customers who aren't in retail logistics. But what we want to help you do online is build a relationship with your market. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I liken it to, to um, you know, almost a dating relationship where you're trying to, to build this relationship, some, you know, to culminate in some sort of marriage at some point. And what we want is that ongoing relationship with a very targeted market. That's why we talked about this customer avatar idea. If you say, I'd like to sell to shippers or I want to ship to manufacture and I just want to work with manufacturers, it's, it's too open and it's hard to get found for uh, logistics or transportation and manufacturing. There's a lot of people who would like to sell that. You have to get very specific. And what we want to help you do is become an inch wide and a mile deep in a few areas. <laughs> But to start, one area. Anything to add, Ann? Nope. Okay. Yep. So continuing on, um, there's lots of different ways to get out there and share your expertise. Ann pushed me to start blogging, but that's not going to be for everybody. We're also doing a webinar today because we enjoy doing webinars and we find it to be a good way for us to, to make some sales, to build some relationships. And... You know, with building this relationship, we're not we're not cold calling and saying we can be the lowest price. We're not catching you at a time that where you don't want to talk. People who signed up for our webinar said, yeah, I have at least a passing interest in this. I have a little bit of a problem. Perhaps you can educate me. Maybe you can become a customer at some point. But from our perspective, this is the right way for us to build credibility. You don't build credibility by begging on the phone every day. No, that's not exactly what professionals do. I don't get calls from my doctor or lawyer doing that. So um, webinar is a great way. Like this is just one approach. There's others. Let's share some others. Um, white papers. So <laughs> when Ann pushed me to um, begin blogging, I started doing that. I talked to my web guy and I said, who visits my blog? I don't even know who comes to it. And he said, create a white paper. And I did, I created a number of white papers and they weren't, they weren't super hard to do. And now we do them for a whole bunch of people. But when you create these white papers, we've all seen them. Uh, we know what the purpose of is to share some of our expertise. And when people get my, download my white paper, they leave their email address. So as a result, I have 4,000 email addresses and I don't try and spam people. I think probably some of you are on that list. I try not to be too inappropriate with the list. Just another way to share my expertise and at this point, build a following. And the people who are on my email list, those a lot of those people, I shouldn't say not as many as like, but a lot of the people end up as customers. So it's just a, just a great way to start building credibility, building a following. I can't call 4,000 people this year on the phone, but I can send 4,000 people an email in the next hour. It's a very powerful way to do business. So continuing on, Jan, please jump in anytime you feel yep. like. Um, yep, I'm, I've, got my, I've got my, I've got my uh, hands rubbing together when I get to the social media piece. That's <laughs> one of my favorite areas. Yeah. Exactly. So email marketing is a fantastic way to go. And the reason it's people do it so much is because it works. For every dollar you spend on it, you get 40 back. Uh, I spent $50 a month on my email list for 4,000 people. It's, it's, it's a fantastic tool. Um, one of the top marketers in the country, Chris Brogan, when asked what's the most important thing to you, your website or your email following, all, all the things he has you know, built over the time, he said, by far, the most important thing I have is my email list because I can start over again with an email list. Um, so again, 40 bucks back for everyone you invest. Um, Existing clients who get an email occasionally from you spend almost twice as much money. It's just a fantastic opportunity. So we, we help our customers figure out what the best way for them to get themselves out there. 
And again, that's with help from Anne, helping them understand who they are, what their personal brand is, and what we're going to share and how we're going to share it. So we'll turn it over to you, Anne, because this is you. <laughs> this is me, yes. So uh, there are many, many, many channels to, to get out there. Uh, Joe mentioned the webinars, uh, the emails, the white papers. Uh, there's a whole nother uh, basket of ideas, and it's, it's social media. Um, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and there's lots and lots and lots of different channels. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's an important concept to make sure that you uh, use good content when you're, when you're uh, interacting uh, on LinkedIn or Twitter or YouTube. Uh, Twitter can be particularly dangerous if, <laughs> if you don't have good content. Uh, because it's it's almost an impulsive thing sometimes, but uh, nevertheless, uh, these are some uh, channels that you can begin to uh, be seen as an expert, but also uh, uh, use it for uh, social selling. So this idea that uh, not only can you uh, put up uh, information that's relevant and interesting, but you can also use it as an opportunity to connect with individuals who may be interested in what you have. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please, Joe. Uh, yep. Yep. So this is how we used to do it. We used the yellow pages. Uh, I had an interesting experience yesterday. I was thinking, oh, you know, the yellow pages is really how people found people all those years ago. You, you know, uh, you, you go and look in the yellow pages to see what was available in your air could serve you. And I thought, um, could I even find a yellow pages um, in my house to take a picture of it to use on a slide? And um, I couldn't. I dug all over the place and I finally found one in the basement and it was from like 2007. Uh, people don't use anything like that anymore. They use uh, some sort of internet channel, uh, some sort of age of information channel. So it allows you to be out there, build a professional profile that attracts individuals to your service. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it, it's, it, it's widespread. Um, the uh, LinkedIn is another uh, possibility. And uh, the types of things that you do on LinkedIn actually feed your Google search. So you get credit for uh, your goods and services on Google as far as the search engine is concerned based on your activity in LinkedIn. So if you can put together a nice profile and start to share articles, et cetera, uh, this makes it easier for you to be found. Um, in the yellow pages, uh, it used to be, you know, you would be like triple A something or uh, always something. You know, you'd always want it to be at the top of the list alphabetically. Well, now that's, of course, not alphabetical. has nothing to do with it anymore. It's, uh, it's expertise. It's reach. It's connection. And that's what you're trying to achieve because that's the way people will find you now and even more so in the coming uh, years. Um, one of the most important things about something like LinkedIn uh, is to learn to a have a good a profile branding. I, I can uh, teach people how to to, to uh, use LinkedIn effectively. Uh, but then there's also the concept of social selling. So how to uh, connect with individuals in a way that's not obnoxious and it's actually an engaging process. So there's some learning around this, but it's a really effective tool to build, tool to build connections. Yep. yep. So, oh, we got so, a full question. Whoops. So, hang on just a second. We'll get this poll question out there. We covered quite a bit, guys. So, I was wondering what areas would you like to talk a little bit more on? Because we got uh, just a few more minutes and we want to make sure we touched on everything that interests you today. So please pick one, sales personality type and personal branding, LinkedIn selling techniques. Oh, people always like that. Um, mm -hmm. Digital marketing and strategy. Oh, good. OK. 
Okay, guys, vote early and often. There we go. Developing a niche. So it seems like LinkedIn selling is a, that was a popular item last time we were here too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, the uh, uh, Microsoft just took over LinkedIn, and so you know it's here to stay. Uh, yep. And there is there's a lot of potential in using LinkedIn. Um, really, really important to have the best profile possible. That's the foundation for everything. Um, and then there's many, many techniques to create those connections. Yeah, and if I could just add my my own story on to this is when Ann started encouraging me to um, start my blog, I created a blog and then I put Google Analytics on there. And I started looking you know, with great joy at my one or two visitors per day. And I was like, this is not working. <laughs> so um, I started sharing uh, stuff on LinkedIn. And I had already had, you know, a lot of experience with that. I, and, and then after a while, I said, I'm going to create my own group on LinkedIn. Well, that group took off. And now I have like 98,000 people in that group. And I own that group. So I can send announcements. Maybe at least some of you are in that in this webinar because of an announcement you saw. Um, because I shared information through webinars, through blog posts, through white papers and other ways, um, my LinkedIn following just continued to grow. And when I start to look now, my influence really is, you can almost measure my influence through LinkedIn. And um, it's just been a fantastic tool. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm blown away that how quickly it grew. Mm -hmm. And if it's, if I had one, but if I look and say, am I connected to, you know, all these people, it blows me away when I look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's here to stay and it's, it's changing rapidly in terms of uh, the tools that are available. Um, I just am completing a, a seminar on that, on how to leverage LinkedIn, uh, what's new about LinkedIn. I've been studying it pretty carefully and it's, it's definitely, um, a place that you want to be, but you want to be there in a way that uh, sh shows your best self. Yeah, I think what we see sometimes is now with LinkedIn is some people are bringing a cold calling mentality to it, which is how many people can I spam every day with, you know, a cut paste message, and, mm -hmm. and that is not the right way to go. What you're again trying to do is you're trying to attract people to you <laughs> and build mm -hmm. actual relationships. And not, um, not have it be. Wow, I have this electronic approach to uh, hitting, you know, a hundred people with the same same nonsense every day. It's not cold calling. This is relationship building. Yeah, the uh, the 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 uh, tagline for uh, LinkedIn uh, social selling is attract, energize, and inform. And uh, these are some principles that uh, are here to stay. This is this is. This is where it's happening. Yep. So we, in our, in our program, 3PL sales success program, which we'll talk about in just a minute, we do, we do have a section on LinkedIn and we do show how to, uh, how to win customers on LinkedIn. And it's a fantastic approach. Again, that's how I met Ann. I, I typed in, um, I think I typed in strengths and I typed in executive coach and that's how I found her. Um, it's it's a really great way to go. Um, one of the other things we'll just touch on briefly is, you know, you'll see more and more companies are trying to tell a story. Uh, we think of ourselves in the transportation logistics space like, oh, I don't have a story, but we all have a story to tell. You know, and that gets back to that branding that we talked about, the personal branding. So I think it, whether you're a company or an individual, you have to have a story that makes some sense. And I don't think it, it, it will, it, you know, you look at this Dos Equis, their story was kind of silly, but we still love it. <laughs> and you recognize it's not real, but you don't think that these guys are lying to me. Um, that's part of what they're doing. They're telling their story. And big brands are looking at individuals and saying, I wish I was them. I wish I could be an individual and tell my story. So there's some real advantages to you know this age because we can tell our story online. And LinkedIn is one of those ways to tell it. Mm -hmm. um, so continuing on. Um, one of the things that we want to get to is we want you guys to be able to look be looked at as experts recognized experts trusted advisors 
and you know we want to help um, help our help you tell your story, help help the market understand what makes you different and better. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go about that. LinkedIn, again, is a fantastic way. No matter what I do, it ends up on LinkedIn at some point. <laughs> so, I'm yes, gonna and go ahead, Ann. I was going to say, and it, just uh, again, adding in the idea that all the uh, activity that you do online uh, it pours into your your uh, the Google algorithm. Uh, there are some that are more powerful than others. One is LinkedIn. Uh, you know, Twitter is also gaining uh, a lot of uh, ground as well. That's uh, when I was at the uh, LinkedIn seminar, they talked about big things are happening at Twitter. And so that's something to watch. Uh, so those those two big ones. And then Facebook is 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 also in there, too. Um, it's not something to be ignored. Uh, so I would say those are the big three. Um, and then you could also probably throw in YouTube if you've got some sort of demonstration videos or, or something like that. Uh, but those are, those are, I would say in order, it would be LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or maybe Facebook and YouTube were tied. I think what we're also seeing is that, um, a lot of video is being consumed, uh, via Facebook where, so they're kind of face based that way. Um, from from my experience in digital marketing, it seems as if you get m more hits on Facebook, but more sales um, on LinkedIn. But and again, I'm not ever going to count out YouTube. People call me all the time and say, oh, I found you on YouTube. And I would not say that has been my strong suit. But we will end up putting this webinar or ones just like it on YouTube. We recorded this today and we'll put this on uh, YouTube and at some point someone will call us. So mm -hmm. this is a fantastic way to do business. And mm -hmm. since Google does own YouTube, they give it um, preference when, um, <laughs> when when doing searches. You'll always notice um, at the top, it gives you the choice to look at images, uh, the web or videos. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um the other thing I just want to add, just because there was interest here in this idea of LinkedIn, is that you also want to have um, a clear uh, uh, trail to your name. Um, in other words, there's consistency between your website, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, so that you, the names are the same and the and the uh, so you can be so you can be found because it creates a trail. So you want that to be clean and you want that to be. Uh, the, to, for it to be very, very clear that they're talking about the same guy or the same girl or the same company. And so those things are really, really important too as you uh, start to forge your way out. Yep, yep. It's, it's this guy, this guy's is the way of the future. The ways that we have been selling in the past just aren't going to continue. And um, we do have an offer for you today. Uh, I want to talk about that briefly. Um, can you guys all see my screen still? Hang on. You know what? I, I don't think you can. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to send you guys. A, 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 a... I can see the screen, Joe. The, the screen is oh, okay. There. Can you see the uh, the program that we offer? <laughs> all I see is Section Five. The offer. Okay. So there's there's a. Uh, an overview of the program that Ann and I offer. We offer a program called 3PL Sales Success Program. And what we do in that program is just what we talked about today. It starts with an assessment. Uh, we help you build a personal brand and, get, and there's a lot of coaching in there and there's a lot of training in there. And then we teach you the 21st century sales skills to get your to get you guys more leads, more credibility, and ultimately more sales. And and did mention my master's degree is in education geared towards consulting and training. So I only work with adults. I started to realize years ago, though, that there was something missing from traditional training. And it's the coaching and assessment, the stuff that Ann does. So I don't do training anymore without um, working with Ann because it begins that assessment. I can't tell you this will work for you because I don't know your personality type. But Ann can help you understand where you're going to be more likely to be successful. So we work together and our approach is, again, just this assessment, personal brand, 
what's 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 your niche and then how do we get your name out there so you can start developing a following and start selling in using 21st century sales skills our program is 13 weeks long it's typically $2,500 we we're knocking off 10% or $250 for anyone who signs up between now and the end of the week. So um, enough of our selling. And did you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, just uh, we spent a lot of time considering how we could pull all these elements together so that it would be useful. You know, what would be the natural progression to, to uh, getting an individual uh, out there and I, I we've spent a lot of time considering well not everything is going to be right for every person or every company or every team so getting at that the individual strengths was part of it but also just coaching through well what are you willing to do or what do you want to do or now that you know what's out there so we really want to try to customize that part and that's where the coaching piece comes in is to be able to customize that and point you in the direction that makes sense for you uh so uh, we spent a lot of time yeah, there's, yeah and there's one, one other thing <laughs> one other thing about the program is um traditional training sometimes falls down when the uh, the participant leaves the training with um, the way we've worked it is there's coaching at the end of, of the program it's a 13 week program so it's not just you know training it's actual implementation we want to help you get results and since Ann is a coach she's kind of an accountability coach also <laughs> so she's there yeah. saying okay you're this personality type Here's where I think you're going to struggle on implementation and she'll coach you through that. So again, our goal is we call it a program. It has assessment, it has coaching, it has training, but what we want is you to be successful. <laughs> the way we yeah. judge ourselves is, are you going to sell more and be able to pay for this? I should also off add this is in addition to our 13 week program, we are also, you know, do the program offline. Last time we did this program last week, somebody asked us if we'd be willing to, visit their city and do the training. We do do that. We do customized training also. So enough of our blather about that. Do you guys have any questions that we can help you with in the few minutes that we have remaining? Or are you awestruck? Because I can understand that happens sometimes. Uh, yeah, uh, looks like there's a question from uh, Adrian. Can, we, can you see it, Joe? For some reason, I can't see it. Hang on just a second, Adrian. Let's try this again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and while we're figuring that out, what do you think was the most important takeaway for you today? If you could put that, uh, yes, we will. We'll we'll put a copy of the slides. We're going to actually have the present the whole presentation available. Um, could you tell me though? I'm I'm very interested. What was the uh, biggest takeaway for you or the most important outcome that you got from spending uh, this hour of your busy day with us today? Yeah, and if you could put those in the, uh, oh, I see Pam had a, um, this is show your passion. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's true, Pam. I think that's, that's where this uh, personal brand comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're mm -hmm. if you're passionate about sustainability and that's where your brand is and that's you're going to chase companies that are sustainable. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a guy that does uh, delivery of solar panels. That's his expertise. And, um, you know, this was, was kind of a bit of a journey to go from, well, I'll just carry anything to this is what his real passion was. And that's what he does. His company is um, is transporting solar panels. Um, yeah, I see a good comment here by Tammy. Thank you. It says, most important takeaway today was the need for personal branding and defining the niche. We always try to do offer too much. And yeah, it, you can't be everything to everybody. When you try and be everything to everybody, you end up being nobody to everybody. <laughs> and it right. doesn't take much. If you had five or six good customers in a, in a niche and they said, you know what, the reason I work with Tammy or Pam is because they offer this and I, I love what they do. That's mm -hmm. what we're looking for. 
Yeah, and it's also, it goes kind of both ways too, because uh, yes, I was just going to do the chicken thing, um, that it's because it's such a crowded marketplace of possibilities and, and everything else, it's also possible to get um, uh, derailed from your plan if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a niche, if you don't know what you're looking for uh, or what you want to actually do. Uh, it's very easy to to uh, scattershot everything um, and and end up with with nothing but frustration. Yeah, Gary had a good comment. My old buddy Gary, one of mm -hmm. our cheesehead badger friends, said, um, <laughs> "Reinforce oh, my suspicion oh. that <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> reinforce my uh, suspicion that the sales process has experienced significant changes and the need to utilize the Internet of Things for support." to support marketing. Um, yeah, it, it really has changed. I think it kind of, it happened so quickly. We all heard that the internet was here and it was gonna change things, but it was mm -hmm. like, it didn't happen fast enough. So we lost interest and get, went back to our cold calling. And then all of a sudden um, companies are making sales online. Yeah, I don't, yeah, it's, I don't it's, make it's, any calls to anybody. The only business I get now is people coming to me. And I'll tell you, it's a, it's a huge difference when somebody calls you up or sends you an email and says, I think you can solve my problem. I don't have to convince them at that point that I'm credible. When mm -hmm. I was cold calling, I was always trying to say, hi, you know, I'm saying something credentialing, you know, short of saying with Kate Upton or Brad Pitt. Um, I don't think people are interested in you trying to credential yourself on the phone. Yes. Uh, the other thing, uh, Gary, too, just to that point, um, also, even when individuals are um, looking for jobs, um, the, uh, the process has changed even in terms of uh, how you seek employment. Um, there is, uh, it's not just about listing your uh, experiences or your work experiences. It's uh, one of the recommended strategies is to have a personal brand statement at the top of your resume. And be, it's and it's because of volume. There's like 500 resumes that'll come in for one job. And they, the, how do they sort through all that? Uh, and so one of the things that uh, they use is looking at the personal brand statement or how an individual defines himself as being unique compared to the rest of the pool. Uh, so it's a it's a trend not only in social selling or or in in marketing your industry but it's a trend in general and so it's really important to kind of get at you know who are you what do you bring what makes you special why do we want you not the other guy um, and that's that's sort of you know the wave of the future and well it's the wave of the now too. Yep, exactly. Any other questions? Any other takeaways? What was your takeaway from today? Good, bad, awestruck? <laughs> <laughs> I want to give them that option, Ann. <laughs> yes, that's true. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the world has changed oh. very quickly. Yes, it I have has. Have to jump on a call. Looking forward to the link. I will. Uh, um, yeah, what what will sound is the recording. So. Um, Mm -hmm. We're happy to we're we're happy to have your time today, and we're happy to share our recording. And again, if um, if you're interested, we are also interested in coaching and training. We have a, a not only our standard 3PL sales success program, which we've had great success with, but also uh, customized training. And Anne is always available for just coaching. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. All right, I'm going to close it off here. And if there's any questions or comments beyond these, hang on. I do have, um, you can reach out to us and send an email and we'll, we'll follow up with you. Okay, thank you very much, Ann, and thank you all of you for attending. Have a great day, everyone.